world's largest atom smasher colder than outer space. Hello and welcome to this edition of Environment and to CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, which is preparing one of the world's largest scientific experiments, recreating what was one trillionth of a second after the Big Bang. The idea is to get a better understanding of what our world is made up of. Indeed, science has only really got a handle of 4% of the particles in our universe. 96% therefore remain unknown. However, of what we do know, France is starting to take a closer look at the fine air pollution particles. The WHO says they're responsible for thousands of deaths every year. And finally, Switzerland adopted a carbon tax many years ago. Can others take a lesson from their example? All this and more, but first, some other news in brief. Return to sender. Brazil is shipping maximum 1,500 tonnes of hazardous waste that arrived from Britain. Labelled as recyclable plastic, the containers were packed with domestic and hospital waste, including batteries and old medicine. They're now on their way back to the UK and the government there has ordered an investigation. Algae alert on the Côte d'Armor in France are causing alarm. Studies show that harmful gases are being emitted from the blue-green algae as they decompose on the seashore. Scientists behind the report say the levels can lead to serious health problems, a loss of consciousness or even death. And finally, an ozone warning. Paris raises its pollution alert to its highest level, scorching temperatures, transport and industrial activity, clouding the atmosphere of the city. Drivers are being asked to slow down to try and help lighten the smog. But first, back to this project that has over 10,000 scientists from all across the world working hard. We're here in one of the four main detectors at CERN. To my left is a structure in which they will smash protons. This will create new particles which will then pass through the detection layers behind me, allowing scientists to verify their energy and their mass. At this particular site, we're looking for the beauty particle, which disappeared just a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. Recreate the conditions right after the Big Bang and find particles which can explain what we and our world are made up of. Thus is CERN's mission, with a 27-kilometer ring of tunnels, inside which particles will be sent flying at the speed of light, in a vacuum colder and emptier than outer space. So we'll have thousands of particles going in one direction and thousands flying in the opposite direction, and every second we'll have millions of collisions of these particles. What we want is to reproduce the conditions that we had at the origin of the universe. At the moment of the Big Bang, and for a fraction of a second after it, there were the tiniest of particles present that have since disappeared. Smashing subatomic particles together will recreate what was then, bringing us closer to our origins. The goal is to understand the origins of matter. One of the fundamental questions being asked now is whether or not the Higgs particle exists. Finding that particle will allow us to understand why particles have a mass and what the mass of each one is. The Higgs particle plays a leading role in current theory of how the world is made. Finding it will validate these predictions and bring us to a greater understanding of how the universe works. It's perhaps the most well-known bit of this experiment, but scientists are also going to be looking for a lot of other particles. Indeed, 96% of the world's particles remain unknown. So it's hoped that many more discoveries will be made at this site within the next few years. But first, the world's most complicated machine needs to get up and running. It made a false start in 2008 when, due to a short circuit in the system, it had to be shut down for months for rewiring and repairs. Well, it's here at the CERN control room uh, that the tests are being carried out to get the accelerator up and running as soon as possible, hopefully within the next few weeks. Then scientists can start examining the tiniest of fragments, particles that aren't normally in our atmosphere. But often the particles that are aren't always ideal. Fine air pollution is responsible for up to 300,000 deaths every year, created in a large part by industry, agriculture and transport. Experts say in France over 30,000 premature deaths are due to atmospheric pollution and to so-called fine particles. Though in 2008 the quality of air seemed to improve, in France these fine particles are taken very seriously. Pollution is largely present inside homes. There's more pollution in homes than outside and that's something people don't know. And fine particles are emitted from heaters in nearly every home. 
Outside, they are the result of industrial or agricultural combustion. Traffic pollution is also to blame for the release of these microscopic particles. There aren't many studies on the question. Intense research has only just started. What we do know is that these toxic particles are made up of various metals or hydrocarbons, which are considered to be carcinogenic substances. If the exact effects of these fine particles remain unknown, it seems they can lead to cardiovascular illnesses and some people are more at risk than others. Of course, children are the most vulnerable, but also elderly people. We have a real problem on our hands. It's a long-term issue we need to work on. In France, to tackle the problem, a plan is being drawn up. In September, it should be made public. One of the aims will be to reduce by 30% the level of concentration of fine particles in the air by 2015. To reach this target, several measures have been envisaged. One is to create low pollution zones in some city areas. Vehicles which pollute the most will be banned from these areas and public transportation will be made free. However, these plans are ambitious and it remains to be seen if there is a strong enough political will to implement them. Well, back here in Switzerland now, we're going to look at the issue of carbon tax. The Swiss have been paying it since uh, early last year and the price looks set to triple come January. Supporters say that it's not just another tax and that the benefits to every man are clear. Roger Dennis's flat is situated a quarter an hour away from Geneva. It's a new building and for energy efficiency reasons, it has perfect insulation and autonomy. It's also cheap. We wanted to be green, so we made efforts when it came to choosing materials. We also minimized interior furnishing to reduce costs and insulate the building better. A small paradise that's not available to all. In the town centre, many buildings need to be refurbished. A carbon tax could help to fund the project. Next year, its rate will triple. Experts say tenants would accept this rise. Tenants are aware that they live on Earth and that they have to participate in the general effort to reduce global warming. Therefore, they have a certain number of duties. They also hope that when the building is renovated and cleaned up, there will be energy savings and heating bills will diminish. The Swiss are green, but above all they're pragmatic. Here, the carbon tax has been discussed for a decade. It was finally implemented at a very low rate in January 2008. The tax revenues were then entirely redistributed to individuals via a reduction in their health premiums. We specifically chose to increase it gradually to give a clear signal to investors and the owners of flats telling them, you have to clean up. You have three years before the tax reaches its full level. The important thing was to send out that signal. In January, the carbon tax will still not concern petrol at the pump, but for everything else it will be 24 euros a tonne. The Swiss appear less worried than the French about this new tax, maybe because several studies have recently shown that a carbon tax actually has a positive effect on economic growth. The idea of adopting a carbon tax is causing ripples of debate across in France and not too unlike this hydroelectric dam behind me right in the centre of Geneva. In just a few weeks we're going to be looking at initiatives like this, but for now that's where we're going to have to leave it. That brings us to the end of this edition. Have a good week. See you next time.